today I have a fantastic guest, a lady who has completely, um, over the years, turned her life around. And now she hasn't just changed her own life and her own direction, but now she's inspiring other people to really find out their true passion and what it is they truly want to do in life. Um, and supporting them to empower them and to really be who they truly want to be. So please welcome Cheryl Chapman. So hi Cheryl, how are you? Hello, I feel like cheering as if it's for somebody else. Yay! Yay! Who's this woman? <laughs> Thank you for a lovely introduction, Gemma. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. So I'd just like to kick it off really with your journey because I first obviously met you about a year ago now, it was Ronnie, really, Cheryl. And um, and I remember you standing on the stage and doing your story and, I, and your story completely, it touched me like so much, you know, the emotion in it and your journey. And I, I was inspired by how you completely made a decision to change your life. Um, so it's really just starting from that really, because I was thinking it's an inspiring story and, and now from what you're doing today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because when you're in your own story and you, you, you know how this feels yourself, you know, when someone says to you, OK, so why do you do what you do? And, you know, you need to put it into a story because otherwise people are just going to think, you know, you're doing this for the money, you know, and they, they kind of make up their own version of why you're doing stuff. Yeah. And I remember for, um, for a couple of years, um, not even telling my story, I used to tell my cousin Lindsay's story because I thought that her story was so powerful. You know, she was 27 when she died. She'd got cystic fibrosis um, when she was born. And so she kind of knew all the way through her life that she wasn't going to live a full life, but she always said that she wanted to live, um, you know, uh, an enjoyable life. And, and her kind of motto was to live, love and laugh every day and to choose five minutes of wonderful rather than a lifetime of regret. And, and even at the time when, when, you know, I was living that that life with her. Uh, I, I, know I was, um, I don't know if you can say the word blessed to be with her when she passed, but, you know, I, I was with her from pretty much the day she was born to the day she died. So I used to tell her story, really, because I used to think, well, it's not really anything happened in my life that's anything exciting, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so um, when I got asked to tell my story, you know, you're telling Lindsay's story, but what about your story? I was like, okay, so what's gone off in my life? Well, to be honest with you, not a lot different from a lot of people. Um, you know, things happen to you when you're a kid. Those kind of shape you. Usually it's before you even go to school. Then you go to school and you kind of get um, mesmerized, um, computerized, whatever it is, you know, you, you know, to stand in line, do as everybody else is saying, put a uniform on, etc. But the things that happen to you when you're a kid don't necessarily have to be like really traumatic. Um, I mean, some people have much, 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 much more traumatic uh, upbringings than I ever did. But when I look back, there were certain things in my life, uh, you know, I was on my own quite a lot. And, and, and I used to say, well, that's what's made me independent. You know, I could make a cup of tea and a piece of toast by the time I were five years old, you know. And that was like, I don't really need anybody else. Um, and I'd always seen that as a positive. Um, you know, and I know that, that you and, and the listeners will have had times like that when they've had to, you know, do something and maybe grow up a bit earlier, you know, than, than the average child, shall we say. But I never saw it as a bad thing. And it was only when I started to really look back on my life. You know, Steve Jobs says you can only connect the dots looking backwards. And when I started to look back on my life after I joined the Public Speakers University, uh, which is pretty much where my life uh, turned around. I started to look back and go, oh, actually, that's not very good. And oh, that's a bit shit. And oh my gosh, I was living in, in like a trance. I didn't know at the time I was in the trance. I was in the matrix, if you will. Um, so, you know, my life really had been uh, about moving around. My dad was in the army. So I was the classic pad brat. You know, I, I could make friends really easily, but I didn't really make friends at the same time because I knew I wasn't going to stick around them, you know. Um, life happened. Uh, before I knew it, I'd been in, um, I mean, I say I've been married four times. I've actually been in two really serious relationships, engagement rings and the mortgage, which is far more tying than any marriage, hashtag just saying. Um, you know, I'd been married a couple of times. Uh, I was, I, I was a really good girl. So when my mum used to leave me uh, when I was five, um, which was pretty much, I'd come back from school, I'd come on the school bus, I'd go into a, an apartment block, we lived in Germany, you know, in a in a, an army kind of uh, holding, if you like. And my mum had said to me, don't let anybody in, let yourself in with the, with the key, but shut the door behind you, don't let anybody else in, be careful, uh, and don't tell anybody, because otherwise mummy could get into trouble. Good advice for a five-year-old. But actually, when I looked back when I was 48 years old and I was sitting uh, at an event at the Troxy in London, 
And there was a small guy, a smallish guy on stage, a bit cockney. I thought he was Essex. I'm from the north. Everybody down there is from Essex. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he said, if you were to die tomorrow, who would mourn your loss? Um, and I thought, well, I've got 43 friends on Facebook, so I suppose that's all right. And the girl who was next to me, well, we'd been chatting, as you do when you go to these events. Um, and she said to me, oh, but you're from the north of England, Cheryl. And, and I've heard that if it rains, nobody turns up. So because you're from the north, it, you're probably going to have a really small funeral. And that was like a light bulb moment uh, well probably a light bolt actually because it kind of struck my heart and I was just like fuck what the hell am I doing here like what is this life about like it, like do am I just here to eat shit and die um and, and I do say that that obviously is part of the, the deal but that was the only part of the deal for me at the time because um I don't want to be so dramatic and say you know, my life flashed before me. It wasn't anything as dramatic as that, but it just got me thinking about what was I doing with my life. And, and I don't know if, you know, I know you've had times like that and, and everybody has times like that where you go, is this it? You know, it's like Groundhog Day, isn't it, Gem? So, yeah. you know, it's kind of like that kind of happened. Um, then, he, then he said to me, if that number is small, it meant you led a life of small influence. But I, my mind interpreted that as you're a waste of fucking space. So I was like, oh, right, okay, I better do something about that. Um, so I ran to the back of the room. I signed up for a programme that I didn't even really know what it was. I happened to have been in a car accident, a, sh a shunt, really, and I'd had a bit of money at the time. Uh, and so I had, I had the money, um, and I spent it on that course. And little did I know how much that was going to change my life, because at that moment in time, I was, I was married. I, I can't say I wasn't happily married, because I'm still married to the same guy, um, I don't know if he'd have been able to say he was happily married. I was drunk most nights. Um, you know, he worked away. Um, I, I joked that my best friends were Gordon and Stella. Um, I was functioning. You know, I was alcohol dependent. I can't say I was an alcoholic as such. You know, there's varying degrees of that. Uh, but I used that as a distraction, you know. And, um, you know, maybe you've had distractions in your life. You know, maybe it's sex, drugs or sausage rolls, as I say. You know, a, a man was definitely alcohol. It numbed the pain of being alone. Um, and what I realised was when I look back on my life, I'd been alone all my life. It sounds like a real sob story, doesn't it? I didn't feel anything, any pain because that's all I'd ever known. Yeah. So, um, you know, even as an adult being on my own, I worked with one guy. We used to sit inside a container Um you know, I really liked the guy, but at the time his values were different to mine. You know, he wanted me to work 24 seven and yeah, I was on my own, but I didn't want to work all the time. Um, so I drank more to numb that pain. And it became a real vicious cycle of, you know, trying to get away from the emotion that I didn't want to feel really. Um, so yeah, so that's when it all started. Uh, uh, the guy was called Andy Harrington. Uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunities that he allowed me to have by paying two and a half grand to do his course. <laughs> uh, and obviously the consequence of those actions, you know, being in that place. Um, so when did it really, when did I have a light bulb moment? Um, I suppose I had a light bulb moment when I realized that the people that were joining were just like me. You know, they were uh, looking for something, searching for something, ways to make their business better, ways to make their relationships better, ways to help other people. Um, and one of the guys at the PSU, um, Public Speakers University, uh, he actually said to me, um, how, how, like, what is it you're doing? You know, why are you here? And I was like, to find friends for my funeral. You know, I mean, that pretty much was the truth. Um, and he was like, well, what kind of business have you got? I didn't have a business. I didn't have any ideas. I didn't really know what the word entrepreneur meant. I still can't spell it, you know, but it was bantered around as if everybody knew what this was about. I was 48 years old. I just woke up. To, yeah. to, to this world, if that makes sense, of possibility and opportunity. Because all I'd ever known was go to school, wear a uniform. Even my dad was wearing a uniform for a job. You know, do as you're told. Don't ever rock the boat. Don't ever ask any questions. Just do what everybody else wants you to do. And that's when you're in The Matrix. I remember watching The Matrix film, actually, and thinking, God, this is confusing. Um, and then I watched it about a year ago, and I was like, freaking hell, I get this. I get it now in plain sight, as my business uh, partner, Marion Bevington says, you know, it is happening and we're in the matrix. So, you know, you have to, you have a choice. And, and, and I realized uh, being around the Public Speakers University people uh, and subsequently the academy that there were other people that knew about this that I didn't know, because you don't know what you don't know, do you? That's true. Yeah, totally. 
So that's kind of, um, that was kind of like the journey to get to this space where I started to be around positive people, um, you know, and you are the average of the five people that you hang around with. Um, I found I couldn't go back in the matrix. Um, my analogy for that is, and it's because my my my, uh, my office, you know, that, that became my office at home, where I worked for the guy that I fondly refer to as Dracula. He was the guy that I used to sit in the in the container with. I, I asked him if I could go part time because I could see this kind of glimmer of um, of another life through the window. You know, you know those um, windows that have like one way um, sheets put on them, so you can see out but you can't see in. Yeah. Well, it was kind of like my office at home was like I could see. Uh, someone could see in, but I couldn't see out. And it's almost like there's a little scratch in that sort of covering. And I started to get a little glimmer of this light, if you like, that there was hope and, and light on the other side. Um, and I started to pick at it. Um, so I wanted to go part-time. Um, and he said to me, if you think you can do this job part-time, you can go proper part-time. I meant four days. He said two and a half days is what you've got. And my life hit rock, bock at rock bottom then. Rock bottom right. Yeah, rock bottom. Because I'd been distracting in a lot of other ways, not including alcohol. So I was in debt up to my fucking eyeballs. Um, every credit card was maxed out. I'd got to the stage where I could only afford to just pay the minimum of all these credit cards. And so when I went from five days to two and a half days, I was screwed. My, my income halved and I could no longer do that. You know, I could no longer face that. Uh, and, and pay my way. So I had to go on the debt management plan to begin with. Um, and yet, even though that was probably one of the worst times ever, I felt really um, embarrassed. I felt I'd let myself down, my family down, you know what I mean? Like, how could I even get myself into this situation? Um, and I cried and cried and cried for like days. It actually freed me because what happened was I, start, I stopped being... Um, controlled by the fear of not having enough money yeah so i'm very grateful to dracula i mean he, he doesn't actually know this story although we have met a couple of times because I'm, I'm not quite sure if he would like being called dracula but you know confidentiality reasons and that he had his why he knew his why it just wasn't mine um he did he also introduced me to a lot of positive um you know, development, personal development. Uh, he was a great uh, fan of Mike Dooley. Um, his father was very much into the law of attraction, you know, um, act if, live as if it's already here. So they were really great mentors along the way. Um, but yeah, I hit rock bo bottom and the only, the only place is up, really. Um, at the time, I'd have probably uh, slapped you virtually, uh, or, or at least laughed at you if you'd said that to me at the time. Um, yeah, true. Okay. Again, looking back, I know now that was the time when I was just like, okay, well, what else can go wrong? I, I give it all up to the universe and said, just show me what I need to do now. Um, so that's when I started thinking, ah, there must be other people like me as well. I can't be the only person that's an idiot. <laughs> what, 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 what was the thing then? Because most people, if they found themselves in a situation, like you said, like, you know, you had a job um, and then all of a sudden, basically, the rugs pulled from beneath you, like, no, I'll tell you what, you're not having two, you're, having, you're not having four days, you're having basically nothing. Yeah. What was it then for yourself that made you go, okay, because many people might go, I'm jumping back on that boat. Like, I know I want this, and I know that through the discussions, all right, there's, a, there's something better, but yeah. I'm, I'm not prepared to, I'm too scared of the fears, you know, hold them back that they actually would rather stay in what they, what, is maybe the comfort zone there and then, even yeah. though it's suffocating them. What was yeah. it that made you go, all right, I'm drawing a line? I think what had happened was, if we go back to that analogy of that room, I'd started to see that there was a bit of light. I, I'd almost got a little bit of a whiff of fresh air as well. Um, and as I put, put, put my head through the window and looked on the other side, I was like, whoa, this is cold out here. And I'd shut the window again. And I was like, mm -hmm. shall I go oh, get back into the comfort zone? You're right. You know, I started to look for other jobs initially. Um, but then it's almost like if you've had a breath of fresh air and if you've seen a bit of scenery and then you come back into what feels like your comfort zone, you know, the analogy was it was artificially heated with central heating and it actually became unbearable. It became stuffy and I felt constricted and, 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 and actually I didn't want to get another full time job. So I was looking for jobs for two and a half days, as in, I was looking for like part-time as in four days, because I knew I'd be all right with that. Yeah. 
But because I'd hit rock bottom, I didn't actually need to earn that money anymore. I mean, yes, I, I had to pay my debts back, but actually I could pay a lot less. Um, I mean, I was literally on the brink of bankruptcy and it's only because my husband took over the mortgage payments, you know, on paper, that, yeah. that they allowed me to carry on without, you know, taking the house and everything off us. That's how bad it was. So I became, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We became creative. Do you know what I mean? We had to find a way. It wasn't a case of like, this isn't going to work. This, this, this is it. You know, I'm just going to sit here and cry. I think when you hit rock bottom and the only way really genuinely is up, even though you don't feel it, is you become creative. Um, I had hope. That, that's the one thing that I had was hope. And I think if you've got hope, you've got an opportunity, you've got a chance. Um, and then I started to think about creative ways of how could I get more income? I'd worked for Anne Summers. Could I work for Anne Summers? I could do that part-time. Because the reason why I wanted to go part-time was because I wanted to learn more from Andy about this public speaking and about this mentoring. And really, I just wanted to have a Friday off so I could go to his events because his events were Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I was kind of running out of holidays, taking Thursdays and Fridays off. Um, so it freed me. So I had more time to follow him. I became a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> there was no police paper ever issued. <laughs> I'm just saying, nothing official. But I followed him everywhere. Um, you know, um, you know. Sometimes I had to go on the bus down to London, you know, because I couldn't afford the fare. Um, I followed him. I, I started to see other people, and I was like, "This is possible, really." Um, and I did start to be a bit of a pain in the ass. I'm sure, like, I, I know. And I'd say to him, if you want me to do my story, I can do my story, which was Lindsay's story back then, you know. If you want me to do any content, I can do this content. And in the end, he actually sent someone to me and said, um, you know, uh, Andy's just sent a message, like, <laughs> stop asking. And I thought, do you know what? Until he really gets mad with me, I'm, I'm not going to not ask. You've got to keep going, right? If you want something, you've got to be focused, you've got to be driven. And I suppose that's what I did. Yeah, that's... Pure persistence, like, um, yeah. I'm just, I'm I didn't absolutely... even realise it. I didn't even, but I suppose in some respects I was desperate, you see. Yeah. But I was desperate as in, not as in needed. Well, yeah, no, I was probably needy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know, so I went up to him and I said, look, you know, if you've got a problem with me asking, just say to me, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm an adult, you're an adult. I don't need you to send somebody to me. Um, but, you know, I just thought that, you know, perhaps, you know, I could do something on stage and maybe then you could spend some time with your family. And all of a sudden it became, and I left him with that. Yeah. Um, and then what started to happen was I, I visualized myself. I, I do um, what's called senses boards. I don't do vision boards. I think using your uh, one sense as a vision is, is, is lacking. It's so last year, darling. Um, you know, so I bring all the senses together. I've still got one. I look at it every day, you know, when I'm sitting here in, in, in the office. Um, and, that, and when I look at it, I, I was living it. And I was doing a lot of things that I didn't even realize doing them naturally. I knew the feeling that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to help other people. I knew I wanted to feel like I had a purpose and a passion and that's if you like when find your why really came about um, because I'd read Simon Sinek's start with why I felt it was very masculine and very corporate but freaking brilliant right yeah. and I just thought you know what I think there's something here that could be more specifically um, catering for women a bit softer, if you will, softer skills and more for like home life and personal life, not just business. Um, so uh, I was sitting in, a, in an event. I made a decision. I said to Marion, it's October the 10th or something. I think it was. I said, by Christmas, uh, I'm, I'm writing a book and it's going to be out by Christmas. Uh, I went to see the book publisher that day and uh, 24th of uh, December, uh, you know, I launched the book Fine Job. Um, Later on, um, it became a book both by Marion and myself because she had some skills that she could bring to the table as well that were different from mine. Um, and then for about a year or two years, you know, if we went on our merry way, I would show these, these books at events um, because what had happened in between was Andy said to me one day, about six months after he'd asked for me to stop asking him, um, you've supported me because I'd given, you see, I'd given my time, you've supported me, um, I'd like to give you an opportunity. Would you like to come to South Africa and speak for me on my stage? So I believe that when you put an intention out there, when you have a feeling, you know what that feeling is going to be. And if you just stay focused on what you want, as opposed to what you don't want, it will happen. Um, and I went to South Africa. I was absolutely diabolical on stage. I hate. I hated myself. I thought I'd done it all. I was trying to be freaking poly perfect. Mm. Um, 
instead of just being me. I had a bit of a Dame um, Judy Dench voice. Oh, you know, because that's how one speaks on stage. Um, and I had to build a bridge and get over myself pretty quickly. <laughs> Um, but I knew, again, you know, it was this moment of like, I knew I wanted to be on stage. I just knew I hadn't done very well. So I knew I had to really put 100% into it and learn the skill. Um, so it became natural. I know that sounds really crazy, but, you know, speaking is a learned skill, as you know. Yeah. That said, you just have to be yourself when you when you put all those tools into action. Um, and then after that, it, it, it was almost like the tipping point had been reached. Um, I told Andy I really wanted to do it. I was really sorry that I'd let him down. And he said, I knew you were going to be shit on the first time. Um, so that was okay. I reached his expectations. Um, and then I really went to it. So again, I started to follow him. I started to embody what he was doing. I would practice. Um, and then, um, you know, he gave me some clients. He said, you know, we're, we're changing the business model. Uh, would you like to, uh, you know, be my trainer? Uh, I said, yeah, sure. You know, no problem. How many days do you need me? He goes, well, I'm giving you 93 clients. So you tell me. Um, and I was given 93 clients. That's what I mean by the tipping point. Because yeah. when you're focused on what you want, when you know what your why is, I wanted to serve and help people like me. That was my kind of uh, um, affirmation, if you like, to help them to become unstuck, to help them to realize that there was a different way. Um, you know, it, it comes to you. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I very rarely advertise my services, you know, um, because I have clients and then the clients send other clients and, you know, whether or not that be in my therapy work, because I, I, I retrained as a clinical hypnotherapist and a rapid transformational therapist. You know, I did the NLP neuro linguistic programming. I did life coaching. You know, I started to just re, re I, 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 it's almost like I had to relive or relearn actually how yeah. to live again. Because, you know, I used to sell things for a living. You know, things used to arrive in the containers. I'd go down to London and sell them. Um, yeah. uh, and, and so that's where it is. So, so I, I can't say that I, I purposefully said, I'm not going to go back to the old life. It's almost like that became obsolete. Not because I, I stopped it. It's just because I went for what I really wanted. And it was yeah. the first time in my life. I, I would have been about 51 at this stage when I got serious about it. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, if I live to be a hundred, I'm halfway through my life. I better get on with it really. Instead, yeah. of, Cause I have a saying, you know, when you know, when you find your why you can live the life that you were born to live. And if you don't find your why, then you'll probably end up living somebody else's. And that was exactly where I was. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 100%. And, and, and the thing I think Cheryl with yourself is that, like you said, you started this journey at 48, hmm? you know, 48, like, a lot of people think by a certain point in your life, you know, that's it, that's, that's my life, that's me, you know, this is my box, this is what I live in, this is the way I, you know, this is the way it goes. And for you to say, like, at 48, there was like that moment of you thinking, I don't want this no more. You know, I don't want Groundhog Day. So, you know, what would you say to people that right now are finding themselves on that hamster wheel, you know, possibly living the life that you were living, like, where they have that feeling of, like, there must be more. You know, yeah. how, how do they take that first step well i can do a blatant advert of course you see you can buy find your why <laughs> which <laughs> uh, the daft thing is for the first couple of years we were, i was going around saying you know find your why and most people were like what does that even mean so when i say find your why i mean it's about finding your passion and your purpose the thing that lights you up that gets you out of bed in the morning uh, but it's also about why are you where you are right now? So if you're asking those questions, it's because your body is probably telling you. You know, it, you might have that sick feeling when you go into work because you don't want to go to work. You might have migraines. You might have backache and aching all over and you feel like you can't carry on. That's because your body's telling you this isn't very good for you. So the why as in why are you where you are right now can be signals like that. Or it can be the fact that, you know, you're saying this, you know, same shit, different day kind of uh, things. You know, why does this always happen to me? You'll be feeling like a victim a lot of the time, or you'll be people pleasing, you know, so you're doing things for other people. Um, and don't get me wrong, the, the why you're where you are right now could be you're doing some really great stuff as well, right? It's not all like, it's not like we're, we're working with people who are, uh, you know, absolutely on the bones, you know, they're, they're not um, desperate, desperate people. They're disheartened people most of the time. So 
I would encourage anybody to, to, you know, to look at Find Your Why, the book, um, you know, see if it resonates with it. There's only three things you really need to know. One is awareness. And because you've already started to think about these aspects of your life, you're starting to become aware. Don't ignore the signs. You know, investigate them. See when you feel like you feel like, you know, when if you're feeling bad. Who are you around? What is it you're doing? Once you know about awareness, it's about intention. And then finally, my favorite, which is manifest, because it spells aim, awareness, intention, and manifest, or as me and Mal say, aka move your ass, because you have to get into action. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, humans are motivated by pain and pleasure, as you know. So most of us will wait until the fire is so hot underneath our ass that we won't move until that's the stage. The, the signals that you're getting, if you're thinking, why am I here? What is this all about? Start doing it now. I mean, I probably had them. If I look back, I probably had them when I was 35. I just didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. So, you know, investigate it, find out about it. If it's not find your why by me, you know, have a look at Simon Sinek, start with why, but start to really get into personal development, be around people who already know something more than what you do. Um, you know, you don't know what you don't know, but you can learn it. Um, you know, and and, and in, in terms of like starting when you're 50 odd, like I did, age is just a number. Uh, I mean, already, you know, I, you know, there's loads of other things that I don't know about. You're in property, right? You know about this already. I was brought up, you pay your bills, you pay your mortgage off. You know what I mean? That, you, you know, that is what you do. And then when, when I started working with property people and property people are saying, no, actually, you can use that debt to have good debt to, to make more money so that when you retire, you're not, not living on £3.30 and a fucking prayer. Do you know what I mean? You've got income coming in. So just get around people who are, who are really good at what they do because, one, they'll inspire you, of course, you know, like you inspire me, you know, with what you're doing. You know, everyone can be, you know, nobody knows everything. You know, even Einstein didn't know how to fucking use a comb. You know, he had to scruff his head. But nobody knows everything. But the more you learn and the more you really learn from people who are doing brilliantly in what they're doing, you know, you can find a way. Um, and that's, that's the key. You know, yeah. you get the signals. Don't ignore them. Really sit with them. Is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And if the answer is no, you have to change something because if nothing changes, nothing freaking changes. We know this. Yeah, and I suppose that's like every aspect of your life, isn't it? You know... I've, I've, I've worked with women and people in general who have put themselves in situations that are shitty just because they're so used to being shit and they're waiting for a perfect moment to make a move. But yeah. like you said there, like when you talked about you know being on the stage, you weren't perfect. And I think that's a, a massive thing that holds a, possibly a lot of people back is waiting for the right time or yeah. to feel ready. Yeah, I, I, I've done loads of things. For a reason. I wrote my first book was called The Devil, the Angel and You. My gosh, to say that I passed me A-level English, it was shit. The spelling was bad, you know, and, and what I say now is I say it's a bit like an ugly child. You know, I'll never disown it, but I'm not putting it at the front of the photographs. <laughs> but, you know, I've nearly fallen off stage loads of time. I'd had the, I had this voice, you know, that was like polyperfect that wasn't right. And, and the thing is, my, the biggest compliment that I ever had was I'd just been on stage I mean I mean the guys at the academy had to stand at the back of the room and like do the you know cutthroat movement when I was going into the posh voice I mean never really posh for me but but posh for me if that makes sense yeah yeah. they used to do all the actions and I had to say in my head to get back into my Yorkshire like I normally do when I speak normally I had to go e by gum in my head and the gum would put me in this lower voice area so then I would just talk like I do like I've been talking here right instead of this rather high pitched voice Voice, trying to be Dame Devon, Dame Never Edridge, just like um, and I came off stage once, uh, and, and I'd just been me, you know what I mean. I don't think I'd got everything perfect. I doubt it very much because I wasn't even planning on being perfect. Uh, and this woman, um, probably in her forties, come running up to me and she said, "Oh my God, Cheryl, I just wanted to say you're so inspirational. And I just wanted to say thank you for inspiring me today." Because before I met you, I thought I was too old, too fat and too ugly. But now I've met you, I feel anything is possible. (laughs) And I went, right, okay. I'm going to take that as a compliment. And then she went, oh my gosh, no, I didn't mean it like that. I mean, you know, I mean, just meant like you're so real and authentic and blah, 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 blah. And I said, I'm perfectly fine with it. If it's helped you today, my work here is done today. Do you know what I mean? And that is people are not looking for... 
Um, I think gone are the days of people looking up to big celebrities. You know, I mean, look, we watch so many bloody um, what's what, what's the word I'm looking for? Reality TV. You know, we see that these celebrities are just human beings like us. They just happen to have had a break in some place. So people are looking for real, authentic. You know, they don't want this painted on face and everything. Um, you know, and I just think if you can be real and if you can be you, you'll know something that can help somebody else. Yeah. Um, the first person you've got to help is you. Um, you know, so many excuses come out. You know this, Gemma, you know, like I can't afford it. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, you know, it's not for me. Oh, I'm not good enough. You know what I mean? And a lot of that, to be honest, goes back to where we started, which is because as kids, you might be told you can't have it unless we've got the money in the teapot. Money doesn't grow on trees. Who do you think you are? Be quiet. Stand there and don't speak until you're spoken to. All the stuff that mums and dads around the world are doing every day because they don't actually know anything else. Yeah. And monkey see, monkey do. So those kids grow up and do the same, you know, and the same and the same and the same. Um, there's a great book by Steve Peters called The Male... Uh, the, the, uh, the male chimp, I want to say, it's not male chimp, the chimp paradox. paradox yeah, I've been reading that. Yeah, and he talks about, you know, the fridge industry. So when kids come home, they bring you home the picture, don't they? And, and, and you go, I've done it with my nephew. Oh my God, that's amazing. I want you clever, look what you've done. And then we put it on the fridge, and then we wonder why kids grow up into adults that think that they need to be praised for doing stuff. Nobody needs to be praised for doing anything. You're amazingly, authentically, brilliantly, 100% uniquely you. How fucking awesome is that anyway? You don't have to do anything other than just be you. But we get into the sausage machine that makes us think we have to be somebody else. So be you. You're good enough. Do you know what I mean? That's pretty much the way that it is. And I, and I, I love that, Cheryl. I truly do because, you know, like when you said that, people say these things, like it's all the sabotage that we actually, you know, you said you've got to love you, you've got to be you, like start here, this is where it starts. Yeah. But a lot of the time to start with you, you really have to kind of um, overcome your self-talk, overcome the ego. And also a lot of the time, um, women I speak to, uh, linked to their confidence, it's, it's always external things that are affecting them, like other people's opinions or other people's thoughts or how they'll be perceived. What would you say to somebody to kind of be just be themselves, be flaws and all, and just love who they truly are? Like, how do you get past that point of not wanting to please? Yeah, uh, I have a little t technique that I use when I do my um, therapy work, and that is that if you imagine that you are all the parts of you. In other words, you know, you're a lot younger than me, so we'll go with me. 55, right? So if I imagine that I've got 55 mini Cheryls all inside of me, the one-year-old, the two-year-old, the three-year-old, etc., even the 54-year-old, you know, I'm, I'm the mama bear now, right? So if I was going to look after a one-year-old child or a two-year-old child or a three, etc., 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 do... You know, if you were going to do that, if you were going to look after all these little tiny versions of you, would you say hurtful, harmful words like you silly bitch or you silly cow or who the hell do you think you are? And the answer is no, you wouldn't because you wouldn't say it to a child knowingly. Um, you wouldn't probably say it to anybody else, but we say these hurtful, harmful words to ourselves. Uh, Marissa Peer, who I um, trained with for Rapid Transformation, you know, she, she brought this to my attention and it's absolutely true. So you are good enough because you've got all these little parts of you inside of you. And so think about, you know, when you were one, what were you brilliant at? You know, you were brilliant at just being, you know, mm -hmm. think about when you were two, when you were three, when you, you can always pick all these amazing things. And the biggest problem that people have is they, they give themselves an identity. I am stupid. I am not enough. I am this. I am old. I am fat. I am whatever. So one of the tools that you can do, one of the little techniques is you can write down all of those things that you think that you're, you are. I'm fat. I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm blah, 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 uh, on one side of the paper or even on a full piece of paper. And then on another piece of paper, you can write the opposite. So I am enough. I am, I am wise instead of being old, you know, because with age comes wisdom you know i am perfect i am my perfect size you know i am enough i am this i am that whatever you're good at and once you've got the opposites you can then burn the piece of paper that that you're saying all those stupid things to yourself because you're being a ninky nonk you know so if you drop something don't say oh silly cow go oh am i right ninky nonk or silly billy because there's no um um 
there's no energy behind these words, you know, but you can say it to yourself, you know, I'll, I'll do it in the supermarket. I go, oh, you're ninky nonk. And I can see people looking at me at supermarket, but I'm like, but I am a ninky nonk. I'm just happy to be a bit, you know, careless today, you know, hey, hey, ho, oh, today's the day. Um, and, and really be kind to yourself. Um, uh, you know, Marissa taught me to write on every mirror in the in the house, I am enough. And when I get up in the morning, I'll say to people, stand there in your brown and your pants, pretending you're Wonder Woman, put your hands on your hips, because that gives you a perfect, uh, you know, power pose, if you like, and just say, I am enough. And say it enough till you actually believe it. Because I am enough, because I'm uniquely me. Nobody's Cheryl Chapman, no one's Gemma Sharples, you know. We are individually freaking awesome and then that's the other one i do I go i am freaking awesome and i will go through the day reminding myself because the mind loves what's familiar yeah. so if you've been so used to being told that you're shit and then you believe you're shit and you're telling yourself shit guess what you'll be shit or you'll be a ninky nunk <laughs> but change it just change the words um change the words change the meaning um you know so when you change your story and then you share your story because you can te- help help other people to do it then that inspires people yeah. Um, and everybody's just amazingly fabulous you know the, my, the clients that come here you know they're so worried and being held back by things that are not so bad I mean when you're five dropping an ice cream is a trauma as Maz says um, so it doesn't have to be anything major but it's just what the way you've been brought up probably yeah. um, or something's happened to you you know a death a divorce a desertion um, a disappointment in life can set you back just remember who you are I, I, and I know I do this analogy the chances of you being here as a human is like one in however many million um, you know um, your parents had to have sex you know they had to the sperm had to find the right egg you know the chances of us even being alive together and listening and chatting today Jim you know what I mean are like so infinitely not possible that I, that we've got to be here for something else yeah. do you know what I mean? and if we're not we better make the most of what we got <laughs> so yeah. just always always catch yourself doing stuff right um you know and that goes the same for your kids and and for everybody in your life do you know what I mean you know because that's what makes the world a better place in the end yeah, totally. And uh, um, obviously now, Cheryl, you, you speak you talk around the world, you speak on stage very regular, you um, help men and women find, you know, what the passion is, the purpose is. And I, I always say, obviously, I started getting into public speaking. And part of that, even though I've been a teacher for many years and spoke and done this, I found that I had this, like, issue, like fear um, a confidence possibly issue with when you had to kind of stand up and out of the crowd and give your message. How, what would you say to anybody to be able to get over a hurdle? It might not be the case that they're standing on the stage and doing, um, you know, public speaking and sending out a message. Mm. It might just be the case that they are being, you know, finding their true self and being true to themselves. It's like, how do you, how did you find your confidence to go, no, I'm, I'm doing this for me and, I'm, and and have that presence and that confidence within you to do that. Yeah, I think the first time in South Africa when I was a bit, you know, I'd got my new neck suit on, it was a bit bit tight because I didn't want to buy a big size. You know, I was really focused on me. You know, was I going to be perfect? Was I going to be good enough? And all, the, all, all that self-talk was going on. Um, and for a few years after, not a few years, but probably a few, about a year after that, um, I still kept getting the dry mouth. I still kept getting the sweaty armpits, you know, all those lovely attractive things that happen when you first start doing it. And I used to blame, uh, oh, I better not drink coffee for a little while because that's obviously what's making my mouth dry. Uh, I better have, you know, chewing gum and stuff like that. The reality of it is when you change the focus and the focus is no longer on you and what you are talking about or what you might look like or does your bum look big in this and all that stuff that goes through your head and you change it to those who are in front of you and what you can help them with, then it completely does, uh, you know, um, a 360. Because ultimately, the only thing, I mean, you know, I can be stood on the, on the, on a sideline, I can be on a, a Facebook live and then I'm going on to stage. So my only intention whenever I go on stage is today I'm going to be here to serve you because I believe that I've got something that could change your life. If it resonates with you, that's brilliant. If it doesn't, that's fine. I hope you'll find somebody that it can. And so everything that I'm doing, I'm having a conversation just like I would do with my nephew, my sister, you, you know, anybody, you know, any of the amazing, uh, you know, guys that, that you've introduced me to, that Andy has 
has whoever it is i'm having a conversation i I, my intention is only pure in the fact that i want to help people to avoid being in a space like i was or worse um and so that i think that attention coming off you suddenly it changes when you were a teacher you didn't have a problem because you knew you were there to help the kids as much as you possibly could you know in the in the education system that you had and i think that's exactly the same i think that's where you are now you know when you're doing you know your events you know you've got those people in front of you you've learned a few things along the way you've made a shitload of mistakes (laughs) i'm sure like everybody else has do you know what i mean and you want to help them to avoid those mistakes the intention is pure that's, that's that's the way to do it because then you're having a conversation you're being yourself you don't you know, i mean no i mean sometimes i'll turn up i won't even have any makeup on these days um you know uh, yes i will have brushed my hair and done stuff like that but it doesn't really matter what i look like you know it's not about me it's not about me it's about the people that are in front of me and how i can help them and if one person thinks i'm fat old ugly and it helps and inspires them i'm good to go do you know what i mean that is that's the end of it for me that was the turning point when i realized um, it was about connecting with the audience and giving the audience what you had that could potentially help them today. Every time, that's where I come from. Yeah, no, I, I love that because when I first started out, in the, you know, in the, like you're saying now, it, it's that case of do I wait to be perfect or do I just purely? And, when, and I remember you saying to me, come from a place of serving, like giving. And as soon as I had that in my mind and switched it around, it actually changed everything, not just being on the stage for all the interactions I had in life. Yeah. So, uh, the relationships I have with people, everything. So I think, you know, like you said, you need to kind of, first of all, find you and your why and your purpose. And then once you find that and like what, what it is that really lights you up, uh, it's about actually looking outwards, isn't it? And going like, what, how, how much of this can I give away? Like, how much of this can I support people with and to ha- help them find their, their path? And, yeah. and their reason, yeah. yeah. I, you, I'll share something with you. When I first started, I used to think, oh, I'm not sharing anything because, you know, um, obviously if people want that, they'll come and work with me, they'll pay some money. The truth of the matter is, the more you give, the more you get. And that's not the reason why I give more. But I'm just like, you know, some people can't afford to come on the courses. Um, you know, we give one place away um, uh, for our retreat in Marrakesh. We've got one coming up in October. And I had a load of people here in the grounds uh, a couple of Saturdays ago. And we chose a winner, which was brilliant. So I give back in that way. But of course, I'm going to ask people to invest with me. Um, but if those people can't afford to invest in me, at least I can, if I can give them a tip of the day or something like that, that's going to help them, then that might just help them move one, clo- one step closer to being able to, you know, find whatever they need. Yeah. Uh, so you're right, it's 100%. I mean, you know, you, you've got to be able to love yourself before anybody else can. Because if you don't love yourself, I mean, I used to be insanely jealous because I didn't feel enough. But now I look in the mirror and I go, do you know what? I'm pretty, cu- I'm pretty hot, I'm pretty cool. You know, I like me, I like being around me. Most of the time, if I'm not on stage, I'm on my own anyway. So I'm, 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 it's good that I like my own company, um, you know, and um, I, I'm good to go. And, and so whatever I know I'm going to share now, I can share from this place of love, you know, rather than this place of lack or, oh, I'm not going to give this out in case somebody, you know, doesn't come and work with me. Look, the, the people will come. The people who are like you and who like you will come. And the people who are not like you and they don't resonate with you, they'll go somewhere else. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, you know, I always swear I've sworn on here today, not purposefully, but that's what I do. That's who I am. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, Marion's got a great saying. I'll just listen. I'll <laughs> eat of on teas originally. You can be the juiciest, ripest peach in the fruit bowl and some fuckers prefer apples. So don't try to be anybody else. Just be you. Be peachy or be apple if that's you. Um you know, and that's it. And then you're on radio wavelength, just you and other people who are attracted to radio wavelength, you will, will connect. And, and that, that's the way that it works. Instead of trying to be everything to everybody and everything that you're not, it's just hard work trying to do that. And I did that for 43 years, probably from the age of five, tried to do everything that everybody else wanted me to do. And it continued as a pattern. So it's time to break the pattern. And only you have the, you, you have the control. You can choose a life of freedom. Yeah. by taking back control um you know and, and just saying yes to the things that feel amazingly brilliant for you uh, that that light your heart up that make your heart sing because then you're coming from that place and that can only flow out of you um yeah. you know being authentic being true being honest um you know apart from if someone says does your bum look big in this and then they might say of course it doesn't <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> or if you're a true friend, you'll probably say, no, it's just your bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like you said there, you know, about people investing. And like you've talked about, you know, personal development. And I think anybody listening, you know, on this right now, they're probably on that route of that journey of, I want, I want to know more about me and I want to empower me. I want to, you know, I've got particular goals and I've got things I want to achieve. Um, but it's also for me, and it might be similar for you, Charlotte, it's a case of learning how to invest in myself. Yeah, yeah. I've got a great, um, uh, we do this in the Y, in the, in the, in the Find Your Y Foundation um, teachings. You have to know your value. Uh, and if ever you say something like, oh, that's expensive, what you're saying is, I'm not worth that investment. Mm. And if you don't, like if you don't love yourself, if you don't value yourself, nobody else will. So it has to all start from you as well with the investment. So what I used to do was I used to, um, I mean, I still do it now. It's called a, a value calculator. And you just have a little spreadsheet and you work out what your average um, kind of like um, hourly rate is at the minute. You know, if you're a mum, then you have to work out, you know, you know what, what, what the value is that. If you're working somewhere, it's a bit easier. If you're an entrepreneur, you know, it's kind of the average of the hourly rate that you get now. And then you can put on the left hand side anything that you do to invest in yourself. So that might be, um, you know, you go for a massage, for example. So you put the price of the massage and the time, you know, based on your hourly rate that goes into the left hand side. You might buy organic foods, um, you know, or you, or you might not buy organic food, but you might not have the takeaway, you know, you have like a, a homemade meal, whatever the price of that is, and also the time that you did to, that you took to prepare it. And you add this all up for a week. And then on the opposite side, you do everything that isn't uh, adding value. So if you're watching Dead Enders, or Coronation Crappy Street, whatever that might be, then you have to put the hour. So if you're average, say, you say for example, you're on, I don't know, 25 quid an hour, just start there, uh, then is Coronation Street or Dead Enders worth 25 quid to watch it? Because now it's suddenly, you're like, oh. But guess what? Because it's going in the bad column, because it's not actually serving you, you have to double it. So now is it worth 50 quid to watch that shit, as I would say? It's your choice, of course. You may decide to watch it. Um, when I do mine, I did make the choice to watch Love Island, but I paid for it, if that makes sense. And then what you do is anything. So if you eat a pizza, you know, and it's full of fat and it's not very good for you, if you have a, bin a binge, you know, on the alcohol and everything, you know, you put it in this column and at the end of the week, you can see how much more you're worth. When you first start doing this, again, it's about awareness. It's because if you don't monitor it, you don't know about it. So at the end of the first week and you realize that you've overspent on the bad side, you'll start to change your habits. You'll start to change things. So now you realize that the more you invest in you, your value goes up, if that makes sense. Yeah. So if you're doing a course, online course, buying a personal development book, you know, Audible, whatever that might be, and it can be, you know, it can be from 10 quid to 10 grand, you know what I mean, and some, then your values going up because the more you invest in you, the more that people will invest in you if you're an entrepreneur. Or the more you invest in you, the more you feel this value. You know your worth, if you like. Um, and so it's exactly the same as the love. You start to love yourself. You start to invest in yourself. When you start to love yourself, you can love other people. When you start to invest in yourself, other people will invest in you. And also you can invest in other things. Um, and I love this. Uh, one of the coaches came up to me, the uh, coach came up and she said, well, I'm a coach, so why would I come come and see you? And I said, well, I'm really, I'm really grateful because I got mentors around me all the time. You know, um, I received an honorary doctorate. And so I said to her, I'm not a doctor that can take your appendix out, but if I was, you'd be sure I wouldn't be taking my bloody own appendix out as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, you can consistently, cons nobody, like I said before, nobody can have anything. You continue to grow, you continue to invest in yourself. And the minute you stop investing in yourself, well, quite frankly, that's a bit like, if you're not growing, you're dying. If you're not moving forward and investing in yourself, then you are taking it out and that means you're depleting yourself. So it is about, you know, investing in yourself, investing, you know, in your knowledge, in your, your time, in your health, in your wealth, whatever it is, it's about making you a better person. So you have a better experience on this planet, um, you know, rather than coming from a place of lack. The minute you, instead of saying, we can't afford it, you can change it to, how can I afford it? How can I, how can I afford this? How can I make this work? Because it's about changing that question in the mind, you know. Um, it's not, I can't afford it. It's how can I afford this? How can I make this work? 
um, you know, that's what I did when I moved into this place, you know. Yeah, you know, I'm in a beautiful space now. Honestly, even even two years ago, if you'd said you're going to be living in this amazing place in the middle of a field, cows, you know, next to you, cows are really big. I didn't know. They're really big. <laughs> um, you know, I've got this beautiful green space. It's an amazing space. Even when I came here, I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to afford it? And I was like, well, we'll forget that shit. <laughs> Stop being an inky nonk. How can we afford it? How can we afford it? And the way to do it is to serve others because money is only an exchange. So if you're giving to people, then they will be rewarding you. And it might not be the same people, but the energy of the universe is if you give, you get. If you give, you get. Um, as long as you're giving something that people want. That's yeah. the main thing. Um, so, I think it's all right there with it. And like you said, there, you, you know, you've, you've taken yourself, put yourself into a gorgeous environment now. And straight away, like you had that sabotage talk and it was like, look, Yes. Reframe. Yes, because it never goes away. Mm. I mean, I mean, I'm saying it never goes away. It hasn't gone away for me at this moment in time, and I don't see how it would go away. I suppose there'll be a time when I can quiet in the mind in a very busy world, and maybe it will. Um, Marion and I, Marion's the co-founder of Find Your Wife Foundation. She said, she's got this theory that the minute you go, oh, I get it is the last breath that you take and then you're dead. <laughs> That's the idea of the journey, right? You know, to, to live it all. Um, you know, at the moment, I still get those moments of doubt, you know, still get the, who the hell do I think I am? You know, will people come to an event for me? Like, really? You know, and then people are then, you know, people walk up to you and they'll say things like, oh, can I have your autograph? Or can I, can you sign this book? Or can I have a picture with you? Still feels really alien to me. I'm just like, are you sure? Like, in my mind. But then I'm like, yeah, of course you can. You know, they're smiling and beaming. Who am I to say that they don't think I'm important enough to have a photograph with or, or, or it's going to light their day up? I mean, you know, but it never goes away. There's always those moments of doubt, but now it's about noticing them. And as you said, just completely reframing it, turning that question around and turning it from a what to a how. How can I do this? How do I make this work? How can I invest in myself? How can I go on this course? You know, how can I work with this person because they really inspire me? How do I find my why? You know, whatever it is, it's how, because the mind will then open your Google brain and give you lots of reasons and lots of ways to be able to do it, as opposed to giving you a long list of why you shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So on your, you talked into habits there, Cheryl. What would you say are your main habits that, enable you like daily to add value to what you do you know invest in yourself and and, and keep doing it and keep succeeding and growing and what you're doing what what would you say are your if anybody could say like where do i start what what are these things i need to now start to put in place and what do i need to get rid of what would you say that the main three things would be uh, main one for me is gratitude. So every single morning, um, you know, I write in my own personal gratitude diary. Um, so I'll look at what, uh, you know, what are the three things that I'm grateful for um, and what three things are going to make today, uh, you know, uh, an even better, amazing day. And then I do an 8 a.m. live um, in my, with my tribe. Um, uh, Monday to Friday actually we used to do it every day but I do it Monday to Friday and we we do the what are you grateful for what is your intention for the week and what's the one thing that you're going to do that's going to take you closer to that intention we do that every day so um, you know and we're really honest you know like some people will say oh well I'm going to think about doing this and I'll go thinking won't get you there what are you doing you know, and I'll help them reframe. And then other days I'll say, oh, I didn't do what I was doing. I say, oh God, I was really shit. And I'll go, no, you're not shit. You were a ninky nunk. You know, so it's constantly, and it's being around uh, people. So for me, gratitude's the number one. Um, and, and, and also I take it to another level, which I, I got from Joe Dispenza, which is, you know, gratitude as in the feeling. And also, I know it's going to sound a bit crazy, but the next level of that is how to create a situation where you don't even know what it feels like because it's completely new. Because most of our life is based on what we've already experienced. So the gratitude and the intention can take you to a space where you've never been before so that when it happens, you're surprised. I'll give you an example. On my senses board, I had this house, top left hand, top left hand corner, at uh, the top, yeah, at the top. And, I, and, I, and what I'd done was, one day I woke up and I thought, oh, I'm just going to Google my perfect house. So I Googled house, four bedrooms, uh, uh, separate annex, uh, swimming pool, blah, 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 blah. And this house came up that was, on, that was for sale. Um, so that was, that was my house on my board. 
when I came here and I walked through the door, I'd already been here. That sounds a bit weird. I'd already been here. The feeling was familiarity. I'd already been, I'd never been in this house in my life. I'd never even thought about this house. Do you know what I mean? When I got my senses board out, I looked, I went, oh my God, look at that house up on my board. And of course it wasn't this one, <laughs> but the feeling was the same. So it's like, you know, the intention is always about, you know, what, what do you want, um, you know, or, or what do you have? You know, I just want more of this because this is great. So gratitude is where it starts, being grateful for small things, getting into nature. So I do my gratitude at 8 a.m. With the, with the Live Love Laugh Lounge and the Man Cave because those are part of the foundation where the women are and the men are. And wherever possible, I will do it whilst I'm walking around the garden because nature... Like, honestly, you've, even if you've got a small garden, you don't have a garden, you know, you've got a pot plant or whatever it is, look at nature. It's freaking incredible. You know, even just a blade of grass is just like, what the fuck? It's just being grass, <laughs> you know. Uh, and here, like, we're surrounded by nature and animals, you know. So um, we've had three, three little mice, you know, sitting outside this window here. I've had a deer that came up and looked through the window. I've got, I could watch squirrels for hours if, if I really could. Birds singing, you know, like unbelievable. Cats purring, dogs bagging, whatever it is. Cows mooing like they were the other day. You know, all those things are just like, wow, what an amazing time to be alive. Do you know what I mean? And, and so nature and gratitude are the two for me. If you can get into nature, if you can be grateful for what you've got, even small things. This morning I said to my guys, um, you know, what am I grateful for today? Today I'm grateful for the breeze, the breeze that was coming through the window as I was speaking to them. It doesn't have to be big, massive things. It's just ingratitude. You're on radio wavelength gratitude. You know, you're open for more. Um, if you're closed down, no sounds getting through. Nothing's coming to you uh, other than more, more of what you're thinking about, which if it's not gratitude is, is not a good place to be, I believe. Yeah, totally. And it's like what you said there, just saying I'm grateful for the breeze is just being present, isn't it? Yeah. Just being aware of where you are at that moment in time and allowing the mind to be present yeah. rather than in the future or the past. But yeah. Yeah. taking that, that true moment to be. It is, yeah. I mean, I know I talk about intentions and, and, it, and it does feel like that is a future intention, of course. But at the same time, I'm also really present in the moment. You know, like I'll walk around the garden and I'll look at the house and I'm just like, wow, like how did I even get here? Do you know what I mean? Like, like this, is, this is just like, kind of brings me to tears just thinking about it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, wow, I've got more space than I've ever had in my life. I've got views, you know, over rolling countryside. And yet I used to sit in a container. It's like, what the actual fuck is that all about? Like, how did I get here? Um, and, and the truth is by just doing something every single day that took me closer to the intention. But being present and enjoying the day, you know, enjoying everything about the day that just takes me one step closer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's the feeling I can't really explain. It's just like, wow. And I suppose that's, that's, that's the kind of Joe Dispenza thing, which is when you get something and it surprises you, but actually you've, you, your intention has been every day to just do something that takes you, you know, enjoy what you're doing, be grateful, get in nature, you know, it's laugh every day. You know, the motto from Lindsay is to live, love and laugh every day. Do you know what I mean? So I'm doing that, you know, I'm loving people. I don't mean sexually, not that promiscuous, you know, I love life. You know, and, and I laugh every day, you know, and it can be on daft things and odd things. It can be the dog. It can be just random things. Um, that's a much better place to be. Do you know what I mean? Just be in the moment um, and just loving life. No, yeah. I, I love that. And I love the fact that you said there about your, your form and just look and go, wow, I, yeah. I, I, I'm here. But, and I, even though I had the intention, I knew this is something I wanted. It wasn't like be all and end all. It just can actually happened through my journey yeah yeah and, and the space here the reason why we, you know the reason why it's so beautiful here is you know like a couple of saturdays ago we had like 30 people you know we had families come so we, we have some wise women and we have some wise men but you know their partners came their kids came the kids were jumping on the trampoline do you know what i mean running around you know using the space for what it's yeah. for do you know what i mean it's not not a just a picture card you know it's to be lived in 
um, you know, and just seeing those people and being able to to, to like uh, give this space because this is where we do a lot of our programs as well. Um, you know, if we're not in Marrakesh, we're in Huddersfield. <laughs> it doesn't sound so great, but it's a beautiful space. You know, this house is built on cross ley lines. You know, which is where auspicious buildings, uh, you know, are, are usually built. It's got a brilliant energy, and to be able to share that with other people, you know, is really, um, you know, I'm very grateful for that opportunity to be able to be in a space, hold space for others, so that they can feel and and experience you know the the energy that i i feel really blessed to have every day you know when i'm here if i'm not flying around the world it's a nice space very grounded very present but really energizing at the same time um and that's you know that's what life's about really enjoying the moment as you said Jen. yeah totally totally uh, uh, yeah i love it cheryl i do and i always love speaking to you because you are just so real um transparent and honest and i think that's you know the perfect way to be Totally. So just to kind of sum it up, I'd just like to ask you before we do, like, um, is for anybody that has been listening, what are the three things that you would like to, to leave them with for them to kind of be more empowered or more confident or just to take the first step, like, just out of everything? I know you, there's loads of tips there throughout it. What would you say are the three key things just to start this journey? The three key things are, I would say, um, learn to love yourself, every single bit about you. It makes you uniquely you. Stand in your pants in the morning, look in the mirror and say, you are freaking awesome and believe it. And the third thing is, I would say to just be. Just be. Great. I love it. So, Cheryl, where could uh, the listeners find you online? You know, if you want to connect with you, where could they find you? So if they go to um, www.findyourwhyfoundation.com uh, and they'll be able to find myself and the lovely Marion there. So that's www.findyourwhyfoundation.com or you can go to www.is that Did I do too many W's then? www.findyourwhyfoundation.com <laughs> getmybook.com um, and they'll also be able to find us there. Thanks. I'm on social media, so cheryl-chapman.com uh, or Dr. Dr. Chapman or Cheryl Chapman 29. You'll usually find me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, the usual Facebook. If you Google me, by the way, and you Google Cheryl Chapman and you get a woman who's fluffing her breasts, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the other one. <laughs> No, that's excellent. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and thank you for sharing that. There's been lots of tips uh, throughout that whole chat there, you know, and just um, things that people can implement. So you yeah. just don't have to even like plan it in. It's just like, just start. Just start, like you said, just, be, just things of gratitude in the morning. Just start to, you know, love yourself. Just start to have an intention. Things that people can actually take away and start doing straight away. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for. Thank you, you know, no, thank you, because you're inspiring me as well, you know. I like to see you in action. Um, and it's been a pleasure to be, uh, you know, a part, uh, just a very small part of your journey, an incredible journey in such a short time. So, so absolutely, you are a wise woman in my book already. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's super. No, thank you for, for, for it all, Cheryl. Great advice for everybody. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll finish there. And um, anybody listening, uh, you can... Find this. This will be on my YouTube page, um, which is called Gemma Sharples. And if you want to connect on the Empowered Women, you can do that, and you'll be able to connect with people similar to yourself. Also, share your own successes and challenges, and get advice as well. So, thank you very much. And thank you.